Lane community, we live our message of hope, love, justice, and joy. We extend a special welcome to our visitors this morning. We're really happy that you've joined us. And if you haven't already, we encourage you to stop by the newcomer table after worship so that we can get you any information that you'd like about our congregation. We also invite you to our newcomer program, which is titled Exploring Our Faith. It's right after worship today at 1145 in the Murray Room. It lasts about an hour, and it's a casual, conversational introduction to our faith and congregation where all of your questions are very welcome. And if today doesn't work for you, the next one will be in January. Just keep an eye on your email for the exact date of that event. Happenings in the back of your order of service has many announcements about our upcoming events and activities, including that next Sunday... November 26, after the service, we invite you to join me and the Promotions Committee for our first elevator speech workshop open to the congregation. You can come and develop your own short and sweet description of our faith through fun and lighthearted exercises and discussions. There'll be an e-blast coming out about that soon, and we do need you to please sign up for that event after worship next Sunday. And lastly, not in happenings, but huge news is that we now have land for our green burial site. Yes, we're doing it. This was a, a couple years ago now that our members voted to accept a major designated gift to create a natural burial location close to home. And a great focused and very resilient team has been looking for the right spot ever since. And they found it. It's in Hopewell. The land is undeveloped former farmland that we can convert into a natural burial location. And that is the substantial work that is before the group now. They'll have a table in Robinson after worship so you can ask questions or learn more. And we are scheduling an informational Q&A program with that group right now. We should have that on the calendar pretty soon. Uh, it'll be in December. We're just not sure exactly when. But for now, thank you so much to our Green Burial team for their work in this really exciting development. And much, much, much more is to come. So stay tuned. And now, friends, holding hope, practicing peace, and building beloved community, come let us worship together. We light our chalice in the name of love and the spirit of love in a vision of love. For love is at the center of our Unitarian Universalist faith. A love that is affirming of all, a love we strive to be reminded of in times of fear, hurt, and destruction. A love that through our actions is powerful enough to overcome hatred and cruelty. A love beyond belief, a love that believes in us. Our story and reflection this morning is inspired by the invisible web, a story celebrating love and universal connection by Patrice Karst. It's written in your order of service if you too are inspired by it and might like to get a copy for yourself. The very best news ever has begun to spread all over the world, one heart at a time. Shout it from the mountaintops. Every single one of us is connected to those we love by invisible strings. That means Giovanna and her daddy are always together, even though he moved to another house. That Omar can feel the tugs of love from his parents, even though he is living far away at school. Mr. Chang still feels Mrs. Chang close by, even though she died a long time ago. And you, and you, at this very moment, may feel the string of someone close to you, even though they aren't there. You can't see it, but it's real. I wonder. I wonder who might the people be that you are thinking about? Whose string of someone close to you, or maybe strings of a few people that are close to you, might you make real in this moment? I invite you to take a moment to invite those close to you in. Imagine them next to you, held in love, held in love by you, 
held in love by those in this beloved community. I wonder who you may be thinking of, excuse me, I wonder who may be thinking of you in this moment, feeling your string tug their hearts, who are holding you in love. In one of my most difficult challenges, dear friends of mine reminded me of the strings that connected us. Although we lived all over the country, two are on the West Coast, one is in the Midwest, two live in the South, and I'm here in the Northeast. Together, they surrounded me in a lifeline of care that looked like this. They each took turns so that I might receive a phone call every single day in those first few weeks within a critical time. And if I wasn't able to pick up the phone, I received messages, actual voicemail messages. So I could listen and if I needed to listen again to their words of care and love. May we each be Persons, may we be a people who nurture such connections. Our book continues, our strings reach out to everyone we know. They travel far and wide to families and friends, classmates and coaches, bus drivers and babysitters, neighbors and pets, to aunts and uncles and grandparents and grandchildren and countless other people. And all of those people have hundreds of strings. Soaring high over rocky peaks and across the seven seas, deep, deep into jungles and valleys, and winding through the busiest of cities. All these strings crisscross one another and create a nest that covers the planet, interlacing us together, cradling us forever, into the invisible web made up of those strings. The web has no borders and wraps every continent. Within it live butterflies and flowers, starfish and seahorses, lions and ants, rivers and snowstorms, and all human beings. Giovanna, Omar, Mr. Chang, and of course, you and me too. Some say it even reaches to our ancestors and those we cherish in the beyond. One tug on a string sends love to every one of us woven together in a divine tapestry. And that means just one good thing travels across the entire web. Everyone is linked. And our story continues with the, the web and thread imagery. But sometimes people forget when they can't feel their strings, they forget about our invisible web. And that's when strings get tangled up. Like when lonely Louisa isn't invited to sit with anyone at her school in lunchtime or when sad Stefano wishes his friend Marcos wasn't so bossy when they played, or when Mrs. Patel struggles at work without help and she just wants to quit. Even violence and war can erupt when too many of us forget the web. When strings are ignored, they can become weak and begin to unravel. But the more people who care for the web, the stronger it remains. This part of the story reminds me of how we can think of people as basically good, basically bad, or basically blank. For some, belief and theology starts there, and a lot of theology starts with people are basically bad, original sin and everything that comes out of that. People are awful, and how much that awfulness is accented becomes a marker of how conservative, moderate, or liberal a faith is. Liberal faiths tend to be more optimistic about human nature, conservatives less so, though my conservative friends say they're not really less optimistic, just more realistic about human nature. And some days, locally and globally, it's hard to argue that. 
but we are optimistic in our faith, teaching instead that all start off basically good, not bad and not blank, but sparked by the divine, even though being inherently good doesn't mean we always choose the good. We're good, but don't always act like it. Even when we sin, however, through omission or commission, basic goodness remains within us. In this, we can always return to our nature, which is not fallen, but risen. We can always rise further to forgive one another and ourselves. We can always work to repair what has unraveled and to strengthen the good. And if we can't complete that work, that is still the work. We don't have to complete it. We just have to do it. And that at least stops or slows the tangling so that the web, so that others can help strengthen the web too. And at least we're working for the good, even if we can't assure its complete arrival during our lives. The author says, all this starts when we lose a sense of feeling the threads that connect us. I think she means when we are too wrapped up in ourselves and our own lives to notice how much influence we have over the lives around us, how much we impact neighbor and stranger. For when we are more connected, we know that goodness is not something just innate within. It's also something that is shared and built from person to person. The smile, the compliment, the door held open, all goodnesses within shared that frames another person's moments to come. The essential everyday kindnesses that make life pleasant and some moments sweet. The author is talking about the other stuff though, sitting alone at lunch, being bossed, not having help at work, war, and violence. But she concludes this section by reminding us that there are always people who care for the web. She reminds me of the, in this of Mr. Rogers' famous teaching to children, but really to everyone, that in times of crisis and tragedy, we should always look for the helpers. We should look for those trying to help people out of danger and misery. For therein lies not only our hope, but also our call, our direction, our absolute command to love one another. That's what the helpers do. They strengthen the threads. They ravel what has frayed. They weave new threads into the fabric so that it is stronger for those to come. And in all of this, we feel hope. The author starts this part by saying that when we don't feel the thread, things fall apart. So we must remember the threads and feel them and know our connections to one another by actively being with our neighbors and strangers, by getting up and getting out and building in real life communities of goodness and service and support. Our congregation is part of how we feel the threads that connect us a tapestry woven by those before us for whom we are grateful, cared for by us with whom we serve and grow, and to be left to those to come whom we pray it will warm and inspire and welcome. And it is in feeling these connections that we animate the good within, that we feel it, and that we grow it amongst one another so that we build a better world. And now to help us feel those connections, our coming of age class led by Reverend Carol Haig and Kirsten Shearer our coming of agers are Ryan, Ian, Rachel, and Nicole. Are there any others, Carol? Is that good? I think that's who we have. Ryan, Ian, Rachel, and Nicole are going to help spread yarn, literally, all over Channing, each of us holding a little piece of it so that we'll know that we are connected. And we hope that this feeling will stay with us and lead us to the good in one another again and again. As they spread this yarn out, now, we do big things here at UU Princeton. We only do big things. This yarn thing is going to be one of them. We're going to get this yarn to every person. And as we do it, we're going to sing, come, come, whoever we are, Margie and the choir will lead us. The yarn will continue making its way through the congregation so that by the end of the offering, I think we'll all be connected there. And now we turn to our offering. As we do so, we are so pleased to welcome Sharik Marshall this morning. Sharik is the Development and Community Engagement Coordinator for Arm and Arm in Mercer County, an exceptional organization that helps local people with food, shelter, and employment. We are so grateful for Arm and Arm's service to neighbor and stranger. They ease every burden that they can, and it's always UU Princeton's honor and good fortune to be able to support them. We're doing that this morning with our food drive, which we'll do in a little while. We do it all year long by collecting food and in several other ways as well. And we're grateful to be able to follow, to follow their lead in helping people who really need it. Shriek has a few words for us this morning. Let's welcome Shriek up to the pulpit.
thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Reverend Bill. And it's a pleasure to be here and honor. And I want to just start off by thanking you for being part of the web, for being a part of the thread, because that's what helps keep arm in arm serving the community. Um, because our mission is to empower others and partner with our community to help people get to more sustainable lifestyle. And you are all a, a huge a part of that. And as you continue to be a part of the thread in the web, I just want to let you know a few things that's been going on with Arm and Arm and how you helped us serve the community. Um, you know, we have a need in our Princeton community. We are at 61 Nassau Street. And when we're providing fresh food and groceries for approximately 500 families in need um, through more than 700 pantry visits and deliveries per month. And um, that's more than double than what we're doing uh, pre-pandemic. And so there has been a need that has, you know, right, has, has, right, 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 has taken a rise and it hasn't um, slowed down since. And we also provide groceries and fresh produce and other um, items to our print and our Trenton food pantries as well. And we have a mobile pantry model in which we partner with other agencies in the area and give out food to those communities as well. And with those numbers, also in addition to deliveries, that's around 1,200 families a month um, within our Trenton communities that we're seeing come to us for food and also food being delivered out. And we also help um, with housing, 250 households um, we're helping now sustain rental assistance, sustain utility assistance, and sustain their living, essentially. Um, Pre-pandemic, we were only able to give out $500 um, maximum per family. But, you know, I'm grateful to say that now we are able to give out $2,500 minimum um, because of, you know, certain properties that have come because of the pandemic. And so um, it's really eye-opening is really a humbling to see that people are really struggling in this way but I always say that it's really grateful to have uh, congregations like yourself and arm and arm that can kind of partner together and create a, a better you know way of life uh, for our community members and um, I'm not sure if that's my five minutes or not but you can stop me because I can just keep going <laughs> up <laughs> um you know, and it's, um, I, I resonate, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I've been with the agency for five years and um, I'm a graduate from Rider University. And I, I resonate with this uh, community work a lot because I come from, um, you know, a background where I, you know, grew up in a single mother household and I watched her need assistance from places like Arm and Arm. And so for me, it's, um, it's, it's a really eye opening and it resonates with me a lot. Um, because it's full circle and now I get to be on this side and being an advocate for our community and helping out in this way and so um, I, I I love um, to do things like this I love um, you know that we partner with you know congregations like yourself to continue to help the community so thank you so much and um, again thank you for your help Oh, wonderful. I'm glad to, to see that the yarn is making its way over to our musicians and our choir so they are not left out of this web of creation here. Yeah, sometimes the web trips us up a little bit. <laughs> so for those of us that have it, we have our web present here. Great. You can just place that in your laps for now. The author continues that the web can feel like a most loving parent, a most loving grown-up to us. That have come down since the beginning of time, holding and protecting each one of us in a million of gentle arms. What could be stronger than imagining these generations upon generations holding us? So many supportive people can always find a way to untangle strings so that love can flow again. But it's up to every one of us to spread the word. Our time is right now. 
as we tell our family and friends, our siblings will remind siblings, who will write to cousins, who will call their great-grandparents, who will just nod and smile as if they have always known. If we remember the web and tug as it often, nobody will ever be left out. I wonder, I wonder if you can imagine right now a stranger, a person you do not know, but that might be in need of help, of solace, of love. So I invite us to take just a moment to send from our hearts to their hearts prayers and energy of comfort, of healing, of safety, of peace. If we remember the web and tug at it often, nobody will ever be left out. We will see others more clearly. The people of the world will look into each other's eyes. They will smile at one another. And when one of them cries, they will all want to help. And they do. Marcos apologizes to Stefano, who forgives his friend, and they have even that much more fun playing. Someone helps Mrs. Patel at work and tells her what a great job she's doing. And she remembers that she feels important and that makes her happy. And Louisa feels warm and bubbly inside when a few of the kids in class ask her to join them under the tree for lunch. She knows right then that the invisible web is real. After school, Louisa cries with joy as she strokes her cat who purrs the news up to the stars. And the stars whisper the secret to the clouds who share it with the songbirds who serenade the world with this exquisite melody of love at the start of each morning and all during the day until as the invisible web glistens in the magic of twilight, the owls take over and hoot the news throughout the night. The invisible web is alive. Its time is right now. It breathes as we breathe, pulsating all over our earth. The single heartbeat of life and love and do you know what that makes us all? Do you know what that makes us all? One very big family. So let's take again one last moment to be held on to this thread of connection that we have right now. Take some as well. Link together. And we will leave one another a reminder of this connection. We'll invite again our coming of age youth to go grab a bunch of scissors and come around and quickly move through and cut the string so every one of us has enough left over to make a bracelet. And then the thread around our wrists will serve as a reminder of our connection to our UU Princeton community and our presence in the world's very big family. Our coming of agers, please don't forget to take some of this string for yourself as you are part of this interconnected web, both of our congregation and of the universe. For helping out this morning. Um, I think they've done a pretty good job. Uh, yes. So the coming of age group is learning how important service is to our Unitarian Universalist faith. And they created this altar 
to receive our offerings for our in-gathering this year. As you bring your contributions of food down the center aisle, notice the cornucopia and the delightful critter. I think it's a, I think it's a bird. And, and the chalice in the center. So do appreciate the chalice, the symbol of our faith, and watch carefully for the symbols in green, hat, bow, and arrow of Robin Hood, who made sure that the poor were fed. And you may start. We will now bless our offering with words by our seminarian, Pauline Nijander. Pauline is preaching elsewhere this morning, uh, but she sent in a blessing for us to use. We're grateful for that. So these are Pauline's words. Blessed Earth Mother, we are grateful for the bountiful harvest before us that has been given freely and with love and concern for those who are in need. We are grateful, Earth Mother, for your giving so freely of yourself to help us and sustain us. May we continue to follow in your example by helping to give freely of ourselves to help those in need. We ask you to bless this food. May this food provide its recipients and their families with nourishment and strength, a nourishment and strength only you can provide. We humbly ask that you continue to bless us with a bountiful harvest each year, and may that blessing of a bountiful harvest expand to include all those in need. May we all, as a local community, residents of a state located in a nation within our global community, continue to follow your example by continuing to give freely to those in need, so that one day all may have their fill, and then some. May it be so, and amen. After our service, we can use many helping hands and loving hearts to sort these donations and the many, many more that are out there by Founders Room that Arm and Arm will pick up for use in their mobile food pantry. We'll sort the food into categories, then make specific holiday bags together. You can come join the fun and bustle today. We hope to be finished by one, but it's a many hands make light work thing. So the more people, the better. Just meet over in Founders Room, which is where we have brunch some Sundays, kind of on that end of the building. Louise Sr., who's in the front sitting by Sheree will be able to help you. Thank you again for your generosity. It's wonderful to be able to do this. And at the end of our hour, we extinguish our chalice, knowing that its light stays with us until we gather again. Go forth grateful for the moments before you, the breath within you, the people among you, and the spirit guiding you toward lives of love and kindness. And go forth knowing that you are held always and always with everyone else by that great love of no beginning and never ending. Go in peace and amen. <laughs>